it's actually worse than you probably imagined it to be. <laughs> These are articles just from the past year about how the Internet of Things could kill you, hacking the fridge. <laughs> Phillips, you know, Phillips has this really cool lighting system called Hue, right, where you can remotely control your lights. Well, that means somebody who wants to break into your house can turn all your lights out before they break into your house. So we're starting up, we're standing up a new research program, hopefully with a five-year horizon, where we hope to create essentially an underlying architecture of how to think about the Internet of Things that can give you security for sort of the home, personal area, and network devices within your home. That's kind of the space that we're going to be looking at initially. So we think about the Internet of Things as being an MGC architecture. Now, what the heck is an MGC architecture? What M stands for embedded because I can't spell. Um, <laughs> so the thing is an embedded system. It usually has a small processor. It's energy restricted, a whole bunch of stuff. So these are parts of the M space. That typically communicates, because it has low energy, constrained wireless, it, it communicates to a local device, generally a gateway device, most often today a cell phone, but something, the, the beacon that the little device talks to, and of course then that gateway goes to C, and the C is the cloud. One of the reasons that developing these systems is so hard and security is so hard is that you have to build the embedded thing in you know, usually some C or embedded C, low-level programming language. Then you go to the gateway device, and you know, if you're an iPhone person, it's Objective-C going to Swift, and if you're a, a Google person, it's basically Java or, or JavaScript. Right? And then the last part of the application you're trying to build is something that runs in the cloud, so you're building some web service backend. And you have to have your application communicate across all that. It gets complicated. So one thing that would be great is could you encrypt the data basically in the embedded device and leave it encrypted all the way up? It doesn't matter that the gateway's secure and it doesn't matter if you know, the cloud's secure, if you can read the data through the pipe. As NSA has shown, you know, how can we basically encrypt data and do any kind of useful aggregation on it? Because the whole reason we're building this Internet of Things is so we can learn things we can compare our water usage to other people in the neighborhood or whatever you want to do. Most encryption, it's actually possible to do computation on SE. So I can take two SEs and I can add them together, I can multiply them, whatever else. I don't know what they are, but I could do an operation on them, and then you can give me that operation and the result back, and I can then decrypt it and tell you what that product was, even though you who did that multiplication don't know what the numbers are. Okay? It's pretty amazing. Okay. Now they proved you can do this in general. The problem is it's about a million to a billion times slower than doing it normally. <laughs> but it turns out that for specific computations, there are ways of doing the encryption that if you only needed to do addition or linear operators, you can do this and it's not that much slower. And we're going to try to figure out, is it possible for devices to compute in aggregate without revealing their own data? And the results so far are promising. 